Let's start the session on stream today. So this is a quick introduction. I'm not going to read it out. Any of you already know me, so please go through it quickly. As you know, we are covering the entire Office 365 platform, and today we are going to talk about stream. We are going to cover various topics on stream. Before we dive into it, we need to know what is stream and why do we really need it? So stream is for videos. The question is, do we actually put our videos on a special thing like stream? In corporate context, most of our videos are either on a file share or nowadays they may be on SharePoint or OneDrive or Teams. And that is not optimal. I won't say it doesn't work, but that is not optimal. Why do I say that? The reason is video is not treated like a typical file. So if you have a 10 Mbps file and you open the file, the file completely downloads to the local PC and then you can open and edit it. In a video, if you download the whole video first, first of all, it's wasting a lot of bandwidth. And second, obviously when you double click, first it is waiting for it to download fully and that creates a delay. Another thing is videos come in many formats. So if the video doesn't have the right software on your format, then it doesn't work. So fast forward rewind also waste bandwidth because if you jump to half an hour, then what happens? That particular thing is going to download the whole thing even for the half an hour you skipped. So in general, it's really bad. And that is why stream is created. So what is stream? It's just another browser based infrastructure you have as a part of Office 365. Behind the scenes, it uses Azure Media Services. Stream is available on browsers, all types of browsers, and it is also available on mobile phones. How do you put videos in stream? It's a corporate video network, so obviously you need to put content there before you can do anything. So how do you upload videos? Go to stream, choose upload video, put a description, and that's it. That's not it actually. There's one very important extra step. And what is that step? You must set the video language. Only when you set the video language, you get a very nice feature called auto generate caption file, which in simple terms means that it is going to convert all the spoken words which it can recognize into a caption file. We will see how that works in real life later. This is also important because when you record a video in Teams, it is auto uploaded to stream, so you don't see this dialogue. So if you want automatic minutes of meeting in Teams recordings, make sure after the video is uploaded, you set the language. Now the question is, what kind of video formats are supported? Obviously, all the commonly used and even the uncommonly used video formats are supported, so you don't have to worry about it. In fact, by uploading it to stream, you are removing the worry as to whether the other party or the user can see it on their machine or not. Why? Because like YouTube, whatever may be the input format, once you run it through stream, you don't need any special software on your machine. Streaming is being done automatically. The only limitation is audio files cannot be uploaded. There is a workaround to it. I'll tell you how to do that later. As I said, once the video is uploaded and the language is properly set, what happens? It creates a transcript. What does that mean? This is a one hour video and on the right side of it, you will see a window called transcript. It's always there. If you see transcript blank, means either you have not set the language or after setting the language also, it takes time for processing. Typically for one minute of video, it requires around one minute of processing. So just give it enough time to generate the transcript. Having said that, what is special? YouTube auto also automatically generates transcripts. The good part about this transcript is you can actually type something there and you can see where that particular word was uttered across the video. 
Vista is really, really nice. So this is not just automatic transcript. It's a searchable transcript. As of now, only these languages are supported, but Microsoft is adding support for more languages. In fact, it started with just two languages, English and Spanish, and now it has added many more. Of course, the transcript is not perfect because it could be that your voice was not clearly picked up in a meeting context, especially your voice may be picked up clearly, but. But. Uh, other people who are sitting in the meeting room. They are away from the microphone, so their voice may not be clear, but it still does a very good job. If there is a mixture of languages, the default language is used for. Transcription. Now if it makes mistakes, which it will for various reasons, there is no problem. You can correct it so you can click on any sentence there. Click on the edit button and you can make changes. Now while you are editing, you may forget exactly what was spoken. So this one rewinds it for three or four seconds and allows you to hear what was the last segment so that you can correct it more effectively. It doesn't have a full fledged video editor. The only thing it allows you to trim the beginning and end points. That's all. So if you really want to do detailed editing, then you'll have to use something else. There is one very special feature because many times in videos, it's not just some screenshots and someone talking. There could be faces. It could be a panel discussion. It could be an interview. It could be a role play. It could be various kind of people physically seen as faces. So using artificial intelligence and cognitive services, it actually recognizes the faces. So what is the point? Why would I want to know who is in the video? I already know that. The idea is if you want to listen to a particular person, then it becomes very useful. For example, this is a video of Vilji and Steve Jobs, probably the only interview on stage. And notice here there are four people on stage and it actually recognized all the four faces and it's giving you what is called as a people timeline. So if you want to listen to Bill Gates, go to a place where there is a Bill Gates speech bubble and similarly for. Anybody else. It's very intelligent, but it can also go overboard because of the intelligence. For example, when there is a crowd shot like this, obviously it's going to recognize all faces. Some of them are irrelevant, so you can delete those faces if you want or hide and hide. Or if there are multiple cameras and same person is detected twice because of camera angles, you can multi select from here and even say merge. So very nice feature. Now once you have the video uploaded, there is a setting which says everyone in the organization can see it, which if it works very good because this is designed to be a corporate video portal, but if not, you can share it with specific people or share it with specific specific groups of people. Remember when you create a team in teams, the team members are also internally called as a group, so all the teams will appear here so you can share it with one or more teams as well. You can send a link, no problem, or you can embed it in internal intranet kind of any browser based applications like YouTube gives you an iframe based embed code. This also gives you this. And you can control few things based on this. Now because it's a corporate video portal and lot of confidential video data may be there by design as of today at least there is no sharing allowed outside the organization. It's purely an intranet based portal. Having said that because it's intranet based because it's a part of corporate data, we need security and governance as well. So I'm not going to go into details of all these, but as an administrator, you can choose who can upload videos because if you allow everyone to upload videos, they may misuse it. So that responsibility and accountability needs to be fixed. So typically what is done is learning and development, marketing people who generate a lot of videos, few people from there and on demand, probably one person per department can be given this. In real life, I have seen safety videos, training videos, 
typical induction material. So whatever typically goes into an LMS is ideal to put here. And depending on the context of the video, you can choose who can see it. You can also control whether people can download or not. In case people delete it by mistake, there's a special recycle bin just for just for screen, which is independent of the local recycle bin or the OneDrive or SharePoint recycle bin. Now, in order to segregate videos, we have a concept of channels. So channels typically can be for different topics or products, departments, roles, whatever you choose. Create a good structure. It need not be a perfect structure to start with. You can always move videos as we go along. Now, because it's a corporate video portal, most common use of it is going to be for training purposes. So along with training, we also need to evaluate has that person watched the video and has that person understood the topic. So evaluation should be an integral part of it, which has been already done. So when you play a video, you can also integrate this with a forms based quiz. We are going to discuss forms tomorrow, I think. Once you have that, what happens is at a different specific point of time in the video, you can choose at what time the quiz comes. It can be one quiz at the end of the video, or if you have a long video with multiple topics, you can have multiple quizzes coming and going at specific points. So once you add a quiz to timeline, video will play normally. When that point is reached, the video will stop and in the same UI where the video was visible, the quiz will be visible. The analytics of the quiz will not be available in stream. It will be available in forms where you can even export the data and analyze it further. Now, most probably you already have video content, so to start using stream, you don't have to do anything extra. Just put your existing videos in stream by creating a good channel structure and publicize it. So let people benefit from it. The important thing is when you do a search in the portal, it is going to search inside the text as well, which is very nice. So the same videos which are currently searchable just by title now become searchable by every word uttered in the video. So improves utilization and stops wasting time finding a particular place in the video. Now if you want to create video content, I'm sure you already have a method of doing that, but let me tell you a method which works beautifully. PowerPoint itself has a captures video screen option. At least the newer versions, I think 2016 onwards. So if you go to insert video audio, there is a screen recording option. That is the fastest way of creating training videos if you want to capture the screen itself. If you already have a presentation, you want to narrate it and you want to also have your webcam face talking head, then there is another option. In slideshow menu, you have an option called a record slideshow rather, which opens a separate window, allows you to enable webcam if you have, allows you to talk on each slide, annotate it if required, and show your video talking head. And when you save this, this itself can be saved as a video and that video can be uploaded or now there is a direct option in the export dialog where instead of creating a video and then uploading it to stream, you directly publish it to stream as well. So it's very nice and integrated. Now one limitation which I mentioned is audio files cannot be uploaded, but suppose you have some podcasts, some messages, some ads which are only on radio, whatever it might be, pure audio content, but it is still required to be uploaded. The workaround is to convert audio to video. There are hundreds of third party applications available for converting audio to video, but here is a simple thing you can do in PowerPoint. Create a one slide slide, put a title there, put the audio in that slide, and then make sure that audio runs automatically. And this is a one slide presentation. Go to transitions menu and set the duration of that slide, which is slightly more than the duration of the audio itself. Having done that, now you can use the export video option. What does it do? Takes the slide, takes the duration or audio in this case automatically and converts a video 
which you can of course upload to stream. So that solves the problem. In addition to doing offline kind of video uploads, you can also do live events. So in fact, this team's live event is actually using the infrastructure coming from team uh, from stream. But if you want, you can do a more sophisticated live event from stream itself. So you create a live event, invite people and all that. And very important, if you really want high quality streaming, you need specialized streaming services. So if you have subscription to any of them, then you can use those. I'm not going to go into technical details of these, but if you are into streaming, you will be familiar with at least one of these services. Having said that, how much, how many videos we can store? That's the next obvious question. So every tenant can have maximum half a million or 500,000 videos. Maximum single video can be 50 GB and storage is a little different. One tenant or one domain or one subscription at organization level gets 500 GB base quota and for every user added, you get half a GB. So you figure it out. It's a common pool. It doesn't matter. It's not a per user quota. In case you run out of it, of course you can talk to support and they'll help you. I don't know the pricing, but figure it out. Having said that, there is also a very nice mobile app which allows not only you to see the videos which are accessible to you. It if download has been allowed, you can also make it available offline and in the new feature, new version which has been released recently, you can even capture a video and annotate it. Very nice video creation tool. If you have not tried it before, try it. Now it is available on mobile apps on Android as well as iOS. Stream is a part of Office 365, so obviously you know by now it's not just a collection of products. There is integration across products, some of which we have already seen with PowerPoint and forms. Each team has a group of people which automatically appears in stream. On the other hand, in a teams, you can add a tab called stream where all the videos related to that group will be automatically visible. Like I discussed yesterday, we can have a live event going from Yama, which is typically for leadership engagement in the company. SharePoint has a web part where you can put stream channels or highlighted videos. And finally, Power Apps also has stream integration. So to summarize, files go to all kinds of places depending on what is the context of the file, but videos go to only one ideal place for them called stream. We have already discussed when to use OneDrive and all other tools. So that's it for now. And now let's take questions. OK, there is a question which says, is there any feature we can directly upload in YouTube instead of download and upload? No, this does not have anything to do with YouTube, nor can you import videos from YouTube nor export that you'll have to do manually. There are a couple of questions which have come up. Is can you show the live event from streams? Yes, you can show the live event from streams provided it was created in streams. So live event can be created from stream directly or from teams or from Yammer and wherever it was created, that will be the place where you can control it from. If the space gets full, we can manually delete files. Is there ability to delete automatically? I don't think there is automatic deletion, but using PowerShell, you can write it because videos are not really time bound. So it's not like an announcement which becomes irrelevant after a week. So you'll have to have manual or programmatic intervention to delete them. Yeah, Basant is asking, can a demo be shown? So this is stream. It's a very simplistic web page. This is the home page. Then we have discover menu where I can go and look at videos and channels. People is people who have posted videos, not just and then groups. Groups means list of teams. Then you can look at content, so the uploaded videos by you, groups which you are part of, channels which you have created, meetings which you have recorded, and so on. And watch list where if you like a video, you just mark it as a favorite, and then you go there 
and have a look. Then your channels which you're following and recycle bin for yourself. When you say create, you can do these things. Now, of course, all these I am admin, so I have full access. As an administrator, you can trim down the access based on what you want. And when I go to a particular video, so the idea is even if it's a meeting which is recorded because of the transcript, you are getting automatic minutes of meeting. So very simple tool. The only issue is people don't know about it and because of that they don't use it properly. Now that you know about it, I am sure you can go back to your organization and give a mini demo like this so that people understand and then they start using it fully. So I must thank Shesham, Anindo and Zeus. We have been working behind the scenes to make this a success. All these videos are available as a playlist on my channel. My YouTube channel is called Efficiency 365. So that's it for now. Thank you.